grief, anger, and defiance as Gazans mourn their dead. It's a scene that has become all too familiar, adding pain to what the UN calls an unlivable situation. Among the bodies being carried for one last time through the streets of Gaza, the one of Mohammed Abu Amr, an artist who took part in the so-called Great March of Return. His friends say his art won't be forgotten. In all, more than 1,400 people were injured, more than half of them shot by live ammunition, some suffocated by tear gas. The highest casualty rate in a single day in Gaza since the last war in 2014. Israel had prepared for this, sending reinforcements to the border area. The army had warned Gazans against approaching the border fence as a matter of national security. Now the military threatens that if the violence continues, it will escalate its response and go deeper into Gaza. Bus drivers received voice messages from the Israeli army advising them against moving people to the border area or else, as this voice says, they and their families will be held responsible. But Gazans, fed up and exhausted from life under siege, vow to continue protesting. Several tents were erected along the border. Thousands of people plan to camp there, many of them refugees who are demanding their right to return to the homes their families were evicted from generations ago. Ali Dardasawi still carries the key of his parents' house in Deir el Seba, now an Israeli town. I will keep it until we get back there and die there. If not me, my children will. I've been waiting for nearly 70 years and still nobody cares about us. I live under siege with not a single aspect of a decent life. About 68% of the population in Gaza are refugees. The protests will continue until May 15th, the day of the creation of the State of Israel. Palestinians refer to it as Nakba or catastrophe. Everyone on both sides is aware that this standoff can spin out out of control at any moment. Hod Abdelhamid, Al Jazeera along Israel's border with Gaza.